Take our chord inversions a little further now. The objective of this lesson is to review the three forms of the musical alphabet, to review chord inversions in music, to introduce how we label chord inversions based on intervals, and then we will provide an abbreviation for the chord inversion terminology just to make it a little simpler. So our three forms, first form is consecutive for scales, second form is every other and that's for chords. Form three is for keys, but if you also remember, form one is seconds and sevenths, form two is thirds and sixths, and form three for intervals is fourths and fifths. So now let's look at our chord inversions and review that. We had a C major chord, and it was spelled C-E-G. We had what was called root position when you spelled it C-E-G from bottom to top, C was in the bottom, or spelled first. First inversion is when you took the third of the chord, and spelled it EGC, you put the third in the bottom. And second inversion was when you put the fifth in the bottom, so like a GCE. So now, let's look at this with our soprano alto tenor bass and our CEG chord. And if we have our root position chord, we have C in the bass, then E and G in other voices. So now, let's say I'm in the key of C, we know that this is the one chord. And up to now, we've just put one. So what we're looking at is the intervals between the root of the chord and the other notes. So we see from C to E is a third. So we want to notate that with our one chord. So we add a three superscript. But there is also a fifth above the root, which is the G, and that's all the notes in the chord. So we also superscript the phi. So this is a one, five, three chord, because it says that there's a fifth and a third above the root. Now if we look at first inversion, that was E, G, C. Let's look at what we have here. We have our one chord again, because we're in the key of C, we're gonna say, and it's the one chord. The distance, the interval between E and G is a third. So we superscript a three again. But now, the distance between E and C going up is a sixth. There is a sixth above that root, or that bass note, excuse me. So now we superscript a six. So this, in first inversion, we call it a 1-6-3 chord. So we have the 1-5-3 chord, which is root position. We have a 1-6-3 chord, which is first inversion. Now let's look at our second inversion chord, G, C, and E. G is in the, uh, in the bass, so that's the bottom note, and we have our one chord again. What is the interval distance between G to C going up? G, C above G, it's a fourth, so we superscript a four. And then we look from G to E going up, what's that distance? That is a sixth. So we call this a 1-6-4 chord. So you've heard me mention in class before a 1-6-4 chord, and all that is is the one chord in second inversion. So let's look at it another way. We've got our root position chord. If you're in the key of C, that'd be our one chord, a 1-5-3 chord. That's what we call it now. Then we have our first inversion chord, so if we were talking about the one chord, that would be a one, six, three chord. And our second inversion is a one, six, four. So those are the chords we have. But that becomes kind of a mouthful, so we, musicians wanted a shortcut. We want to abbreviate our terminology. If we look at the one, five, three chord, musicians found over time that we can agree that you usually expect a third and a fifth above a bass note, because that's how we build chords. So. If we take away the notation, if we take away the five and the three, when I say one chord, it is assumed that I'm talking about a one, five, three chord. So there's a shortcut right there. There's an abbreviation for writing it. Now, let's look at our first inversion chord. Like I said before, we expect a third and a fifth above a chord. So what musicians found out, uh, over time was that, well, when I have my bass note, I almost always have a third. So let's get rid of that and just call the first inversion a 1-6 chord because the thir third above it is implied. And that's our shortcut. So now we have a 1 chord and a 1-6 chord, which means 1-6 is in first inversion. And now if we look at the second inversion chord, we notice we have the sixth and the fourth. There are no assumptions there. That's completely different. So there is no shortcut. You just have to know now that a 1-6-4 chord is a second inversion chord. So those are our three ways of notating our inversions when we use our Roman numerals. Thanks for watching.